Hello and welcome to Organic Edible Garden. The moon is in the second quarter, which is a great time to put in our fruiting crops. So today we're going to put in some peas and some beans. We'll also give our garlic a good dosage of liquid seaweed. This will make them stronger and it'll also help prevent other issues like rust that may come along. When planting your peas and beans, it's really important to get your soil right. Here we've raised the bed so it warms up quicker. We've also put a lot of compost in and this will retain the moisture because although they don't like to be sitting in water, during the growing season, they like to be kept damp. And unlike other vegetables, they do like it quite alkaline. So we're gonna add some lime and we're just gonna to top dress this on the top of the soil. With the added bonus that it's actually adding calcium back into the soil. So we're going to go and put half the vine into peas and the other into beans. The peas are going to be a shorter term crop. They like the cooler weather of spring and sort of late autumn. They generally stop producing fruit when the night temperatures go over 22 degrees. So now's a really good time to put them in. There's a whole range as well. We're putting in snow peas today, but you can put in sugar snaps or even shell out peas. If you don't have a vine like me, you can even do dwarf versions of them. Just to keep them off the ground because the humidity sometimes gives them mold. The type I'm planting today is called Caribbean, and a good part about these snow peas is they have a bright purple flower, which is an added bonus. On the second half of this vine, I'm going to plant beans, and today I'm going to plant scarlet runners. I love these hardy perennials. They have this massive flush in the spring, cool down in the summer period, and then in autumn we get a second flush. They've also got the added bonus of these beautiful red scarlet flowers. We're going to plant these guys now, and these are in the seedling form, but you can also do it directly from seed. I will do that, and I'll plant each one, and in between I'm going to put a seed of the same variety in. The reason I'm going from seedling is because it's been a wet spring, and if you put the seeds directly in the soil, and it's wet for a long period of time, they can rot. And then peas and beans are both nitrogen fixes so it's not so important to have that much nitrogen in the soil. And it doesn't even matter if we plant them too deeply. When they grow, we like to hill them up and it helps with the more, keeping the moisture in the soil. So I'm gonna plant the pea seeds probably about three or four centimeters deep only. I don't want them too deep in the ground. And by putting the seeds in between the plants, it'll actually extend the season. The first lot will be just about finished when the new lot will be ready to go. And the other great benefit about your snow peas or peas like this is that all the flowers and the tendrils are also edible. The next thing we're going to do is plant our beans. And in this case, we're going to plant our scarlet runners. Beans are divided into two different types. You've got your French beans, your shiny round beans, and then you've got your runner types. They're usually described as runners or climbers. The runner beans we're planting come from the southern hemisphere, so they're always going to grow anti-clockwise up the vine. So when they're growing, don't try and put them the other way around. Now, if you're ever going to save the seeds from your beans, it is important you know the difference between the climbers and the runners. Runners, which grow anti-clockwise, will cross readily with any other runner bean. Climbing beans, on the other hand, do not generally cross with other climbers or the runners. The scarlet runners have beautiful red flowers, which are also edible and taste really sweet. In fact, all peas and bean flowers are edible, except for your sweet peas, the flowering type, which are poisonous. The bonus of these scarlet runners, or any runner bean, is that they form a tuber in the ground, and they last up to seven years. So if you're going to prepare a bed for them, make it good. And like our peas, we're going to put one of our bean seeds between each of the plants. And these are the seeds that we saved from last year's crop. And they've obviously germinated really well in the punnet, so they'll be fine here.
The next thing we're going to do is just water the lime in. I've got drip irrigation along these beans and during the summer months they'll get a daily watering. And now for a feed of liquid seaweed for my garlic. When using seaweed on something like a full grown garlic, you can double or triple the strength of the solution. Most seaweeds are 100 to 1, but you can even go up to 3, 400 if you had to. Always give it a good shake before you use it. If you make your own seaweed solution, it's even better. And I'm just trying to cover some of the leaves with some of this liquid, and the rest will feed the plant in the soil. Where it depending, I'll probably try and do this every two weeks until the garlic are ready. And finally, while we've got our seaweed out, we're gonna give our chitted potatoes their weekly bath in a seaweed solution, which we're gonna plant next week in the full moon. We're putting our agri potatoes on top of the cliff kidneys, but be careful not to scratch out of the eyes when you put them in the water bath. And on top of that, we're just going to stick our kuma in, which is just starting to sprout now. We'll leave them in the bath for about half an hour, and we'll put them back in their containers, and they'll go in an area with non-direct sunlight. <laughs> 